Hey guys, and welcome to part five in this series on using Blender's game engine for architectural visualization. And at the beginning of this series, I said that we would first create our scene or the environment, and then we would create objects that we could then apply materials to in GLSL that would kind of simulate the shaders that are seen in cycles. However, while preparing for this, I've decided that this should maybe be a series of its own. So in this video, we're going to jump ahead to the game engine stuff, and then in the coming week or two, I'll begin the new series on, uh, on those materials that can be used in GLSL. I'm really hard at work on creating several blend files, all of which I will make available through some sort of file sharing system like Dropbox. You may have some experience already with creating a first-person character, but the series would be incomplete if I didn't uh, go ahead and go through the steps of creating one. So we'll type Shift A and add a cube. And from front orthographic view, I'll hold Control so that the cube snaps to the grid. And I will drag it up so that it sets on the grid floor. And because scaling is very important, I'm going to append a model that I have saved in a file. Uh, it's actually a make human model, so I just um, quickly created it through make human and then saved it as a blend file. And now I can add him into any scene and use it just for a, like a visual scaling. So I'll take the top of this cube and I'll just drag it down to the top of the character's head. And now I can type S plus shift to Z and that will scale on the X and Y axis only. So now we need to move the camera to our cube. So I'll select the camera up here in the outliner. And then type Shift S and choose Selection to Cursor. Next we need to clear the rotation with Alt R. And now I just want to drag it up so that the camera's pivot point is roughly in line with the, the character's eyes. And then I can just scale it in so that it's smaller. And from right orthographic view, I can position this over the eye a little better. Just want that pivot point right on the eye. And while our make human model is facing one direction, this line on our camera indicates the top. So uh, we need to rotate it the other way or else our camera would be upside down. And then we can delete the make human model. Uh, I should have mentioned that he's already scaled to the average human height, which is 1.778 meters. Then I'll switch back to textured view. And with the cube selected, I'll come over to my object tab. And underneath of maximum draw type, I'll switch it from textured to wire. And that makes the cube transparent in the viewport. Now I want to select the camera and shift select the cube. Type Control P and choose Parent to Object. Now let's click on the Physics tab and we need to make sure that we're in Blender Game. We can change our Physics type from Static to Character and click the Invisible tab. So we're nearly ready to get into the game logic stuff. Uh, we just need to make one more adjustment to the camera. Uh, because currently it's set to a focal length that isn't very accurate. The approximate human eye focal length is 17 millimeters. So we need to click on our camera and over here in the properties uh, you can see that it's set to 35 millimeters by default. So we need to change that to 17 millimeters. And once again just make sure that you're in Blender Game. And so now we're ready to go over to the game logic view. And I can switch this from solid to textured and go into the camera view and uh, make sure that the cube is selected. Then I can select the keyboard sensor. And once I've done that, I can just type shift R, which is the repeat action. And if I do that three times, then I have a total of four sensors. And so I'll be using the very standard keyboard controls with the WASD keys. And you can call these whatever you want, but it's important here next to key 
to, uh, to indicate which key you want that sensor to recognize. Alright, almost done. Uh, so, actually that's backward, so I'm going to uh, move it up above the D. Now it's um, forward, back, and then left and right. So now if we come over here to the actuators, we can select a motion actuator. And then once again, just type Shift R to repeat that three times for a total of four actuators. And I'll call the first one forward. And the second one I'll call back. And the third will be called left. And finally the last one will be called right. Then if I connect these sensors to the corresponding actuator, it will automatically connect them with the, uh, the controller there in the middle. And so if we look into our 3D view, we can see that the Z axis is pointing up, the positive X axis is pointing right, and we're looking at the positive Y axis. So in order to move forward, we need to increase the positive Y. And I'm going to do this at a very small value. And to move back, we go in the negative Y axis. And because positive X is facing to the right, if we want to move left, we need to go in the negative X axis. And finally, the positive X to move right. Now if we press P to play the game, we can move forward and backwards, and we can move from side to side, uh, but we can't rotate the character yet. And uh, that's actually really easy to set up. So if I just type exit to clear or to, uh, to exit the game, then I can add a mouse sensor and change it to movement and then add a mouse actuator. Now if I connect these together and I switch this from visibility to look and then disable the use Y axis. Now if I go back into the game, I'll press P to play, now the mouse will rotate the character and the keys will move the character from you know forwards and backwards and side to side. But we still need our character to be able to look up and down. Uh, so I'm going to apply an actuator to the camera itself. But I want to, with the cubes selected, I'm going to hold shift and select the camera. And now the sensors and actuators will be visible all in one space for both the cube and the camera. So if I add the actuator to the camera, it'll be a mouse actuator and I'll set it to look. And this time I will disable the use X axis. And I can recycle this, uh, this mouse sensor that's applied to the cube. I'll just plug it directly into the actuator for the camera. And now if I press P to play, uh, I can look up and down and rotate the the character and move in all directions. So everything's working properly now. Now let's add a logo to our scene. So uh, in order to do this, I'm going to create a new scene. So click the little plus tab and then select new. And I'll just call this scene logo. And when you create a new scene, there's nothing in it. It's not like the default when you first open Blender. There's no lamp or camera or cube. Uh, so let's type Shift A and add a camera. And then we will use Alt R to clear the rotation. 
And from right orthographic view, I'll just rotate this so that it's facing forward. Okay, so now we need something for the camera to look at. So I'll type Shift A and add a plane. Tab into edit mode and rotate it on X 90 degrees. Now I'll move it out in front of the camera. Type zero to go into camera view and then we need to unwrap it so that we can apply a texture. So type U and choose unwrap. And we won't be using the text editor, so instead I'll open the properties window. And so I'll give this plane a material, set it to shadeless. I also want to scroll down and check this little transparency box and then move the alpha all the way down. Then add a texture to this material. So I'll just click the open tab. And I've already created a logo that I'm going to use for this scene. Uh, one thing that you'll definitely need to do is uh, you'll need to press N to bring up your options here to the right. And you'll need to change the shading again because every single time you uh, create a new scene, it defaults back to multi-texture. So you need to switch that to GLSL. All right, so now to get our uh, texture to show up, we need to scroll all the way down and click the little alpha box. And I'll scale this a little on Z. And maybe make the whole image a little transparent as well. Uh, and I can do that just by uh, coming over to the alpha value and taking it down a bit. That way we'll be able to see the background through the logo. Something like a 0.6 I think will probably be fine. So now I can scale this down. And let's uh, select the camera and we'll change this from perspective to orthographic view. And then we can change the orthographic scale to uh, scale the size of the, the logo. Now I can move this down to the bottom right hand corner. And then once you are happy with the position of your logo, uh, you can just go back to your original scene. And then select the camera and add a new sensor. It'll be an always sensor then connect that to a controller, an AND controller, and then add an actuator and choose the scene actuator, and switch this from restart to add overlay scene, and connect that as well. And then you need to choose your scene, so you need to choose the logo scene. So it'll always be viewing or overlaying this scene to your camera. So now let's go over to our final scene. And perhaps when you get to this point and you have a scene that you're happy with, you're happy with the modeling and the texture work, um, but perhaps when you go into the game mode, you feel as though something is missing. And that could potentially be because our eyes work very much like real cameras. Uh, we see things like depth of field and we see halos around uh, bright objects that are emitting light. So in order to reproduce that in the game engine, we need to use scripts. And fortunately, there are a lot of Blender artists who have created scripts and then made them available under the Creative Commons license. Blender artist and instructor known as the Timster has created a few add-ons for the Blender game engine. The most recent of which is the Sprite add-on that's available on the Blender market. It's a lot of fun to use. It's really cool. Actually, I'm going to maybe use this in a tutorial uh, coming up. But prior to that, he had created an add-on which compiled all of those 2D filters into one place 
and it's really easy to use. So I'll leave a link to the video on his YouTube channel which shows where to download the file and how to install it and how to use it. But once you have installed it, if you go to your render options and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you see this post-processing filters, uh, which is uh, only available once you install it into Blender. So I'll just move it up a bit so that it's a little easier to see. And so this is really easy to use. Uh, we have these filters here. If we click, we can see all of the ones available. And I have the logic editor open so that you can see it updating as I'm adding the filters. So I'm going to add this anti-aliasing filter. So it's already selected. I'll just click add filter and there it's added the actuator underneath of the camera. Now I'll go back to the choose filter and this time I will select the depth of field and then click add filter and you can see that it's left this little warning it just says make sure camera clipping is the same in filter script um, but it's already added all of those properties and it's added the next actuator it's even given it the proper pass number it's just a very smart and intuitive add-on like it, it just makes the process of adding the the 2D filters really quick and easy and if I go into the game mode by pressing P uh, you may not be able to see the effects of the anti-aliasing, but uh, surely you can tell that the depth of field is working properly. I can see the improvements from the anti-aliasing script too. Uh, I just don't know that you, you'll be able to see it from uh, the video. Uh, but the quality of those edges have definitely improved with the script. Okay, so now let's add a few more scripts. We'll, we'll add the vignette, which will add a nice border, a dark border around the camera. So we'll click Add Filter. And you can see up here at the top, it shows you that it's added it. And we'll also add the bloom, uh, which will add a nice halo effect around any lighter objects. Um, but there's so many in here, a lot of which won't really uh, necessarily fit with this kind of practical purpose but some of the effects with those scripts are are pretty fun and like amazing and they kind of open your mind to different possibilities of uh, different types of games that you could create but but these effects I think fit really well with creating a really realistic environment but I think that wraps up this series uh, in the next coming weeks I will be uploading the next series, which is creating materials that we can use in GLSL that simulate those that we use in cycles, which I'm really excited about doing that series. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've been preparing it for weeks, so I, I'm excited to start recording it. But I want to thank all of you guys for being so supportive, and I wish all of you well, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.